Uh, this is unfortunately just one of the bad puns that I'm going to be using today. So I am your token Web3 developer uh, at the conference here today. My name is Jonathan Shealy. I work for Decentology, and we build developer tools for people, for you, to be able to do React component-based blockchain applications where you do not have to write any of the blockchain code. Um, so just like um, Webpack and libraries like uh, Tanner's new TanStack, there's only a few people who actually need to build blockchain applications and package them up as modules to deploy for all of us to just use and not have to pay that cost and get the benefit. So our goal here is to provide Web2 um, developers like yourself to access Web3, so either if it's your manager or a client that asks you, can you just add some blockchain? You do not need to learn uh, the programming languages like Solidity and, and Rust in order to actually deploy a blockchain app. It's as simple as just NPM installing the modules and away you go. So let's see some code. Uh, that's why we're all here today, right? So this is what adding blockchain code to a standard React component would look like. You end up just importing some core libraries. You have an initialized function, like if you ever use Stripe or Auth0 or anything like that. You just pick your blockchain, you pick the network, and any modules that, uh, that you want to add. In this case, we're using the ER721, uh, the NFT module. So wrapping it in a simple React context, your main part of your app, allows you to uh, connect and log in a user. Uh, so similar to like Gmail or Facebook or anything like that, you would now just be able to have the user directly log in, which honestly is just simply public private key encryption, the same thing we use to connect to GitHub and do that kind of thing every single day. Uh, now the user can just do that on your website. Uh, in order to use the modules, you just take another component and simply wrap it in a, a use hook. Uh, and in this case, one function should be able to mint an NFT. So you do not have to deploy that contract or anything like that. You just get that for free. And it connects automatically to the wallet. So what's in the box? So that wallet connection I mentioned, so authentication, you get the network negotiations. You don't have to figure out all of the different networks that are provided for each blockchain that might exist. All the contracts are already deployed for you, so we use a factory pattern we call like the tenant architecture, but it's simply a pre-contract uh, already deployed and you just get to use them. Uh, decentralized storage is also built in, so we have baked in modules for IPFS and Skynet, so anyone Terminator fan, that name is hilarious. Um, and they're all TypeScript library. As uh, Tanner mentioned earlier, huge fan of TypeScript, and I could never build anything without it. Uh, and we also create a testing harness. So we believe in order for you to actually see these things without actually installing them, everything is done in Storybook. So you can actually go in and play with them and see how it actually works and make sure the functionality is there that you want uh, before. So no uh, buyer's remorse, as it were. Uh, so that's kind of what we have in the box. So the two questions that I always get asked is, is what can I build with Web3 and why do I need it? So to answer the second one first here is why you need it, you might not. Uh, but if anyone has any of these concerns of what you can build, so game engines and uh, adding uh, kind of microtransactions, which is sometimes a naughty word, uh, but a lot of applications do need that. So being able to add that with a mobile application for payments, um, anytime you have any kind of contracts where you just want to guarantee that both sides are sort of being honest, so a mediator type contract pattern is, and then creating a business logic application where another developer could come in. So let's say you want to focus on creating a game, but another developer can just read the blockchain and create a whole ladder-based engine you know, based on your um, data, and you didn't have to build that. The community can help you know, uh, drive information. And again, like I mentioned earlier, simple authentication. So if you just wanted people to be able to log in and you want to know something about them without having to use one of the big three uh, auth uh, authentication providers, and you don't have to build an authentication 
solution provider yourself, because uh, no one likes to do that. <laughs> and then payments. So if you wanted to create uh, your solo version of Medium, uh, you could do a subscription-based model. And lastly, I want to say one of the things that we advocate for is for open source. So this kind of model allows developers to put in a small uh, royalty fee into any of the paid transactions. So if the model has like a $5 transaction for me to give to you, uh, you would be able to simply add in a tiny 1% markup and you would get that royalty forever as the developer. And that's something we advocate for to you know, booster uh, open source. Uh, with that, we have some documentation here uh, you can visit and go to our Discord. And thank you, Amsterdam. <clears throat>